good morning good afternoon good evening everyone wherever you are on the world and uh, this session we will be having now is called uh, mangle uh, systematically introducing chaos in your applications and i'm very happy to welcome ashwathi and avinash on stage now the speakers for this session and ashwathi is going to begin are you ready ashwathi yes vikram thank you so much yeah cool the stage is yours all right good afternoon good evening good morning and friends non romans countrymen lend me your ears and put down your phones i come not to talk about chaos engineering or mangle or to market vmware but with a much higher purpose and that is to keep you all awake after a heavy lunch my greatest intent is to make sure that the session doesn't turn into the much needed lullaby that everyone is looking forward to this afternoon and i'll get to the reason as to why we were given a post lunch time slot probably in just a minute all right to so let's start with a fun activity to jog everyone's memory a little bit All right what you see on screen is a clip um could you tell me the name of the process and why it is important um avinash are you able to see any responses on the discussion panel no responses <laughs> forging yes that is right it is forging so as you can see for for your information my 8 year old son was able to answer this so if you think that i'm putting you under a little bit of pressure with that tidbit then you're right it is intentional um now in this process of forging there are quite a few elements involved so let's try listing them a bit one after the other so what you can see here is obviously the tools right which enable the black blacksmith to subject the metal to unfavorable and harsh conditions we obviously have the blacksmith who enables and puts in the effort into the process the raw materials itself right the iron ore the steel whatever may may be the metal that you're using and obviously the sword or the metal that you're trying to forge and this is the before forging image and this is after forging right now any any action movie enthusiasts who can try and name that sword for me no going one going twice all right so that is the samurai japanese samurai sword it is also called the katana sword right it's it's known for its resiliency its durability um its power and its speed now if we were to draw parallels between the forging process and the process of chaos engineering as it applies to software today then what would each of these elements stand for so we have the raw material and what would that stand for right so it obviously stands for design and code right and that's basically the crux of anything that you're building any application that you're building there's obviously the blacksmith um who puts in the effort now equivalent to that what do we do in software who are the people who do it so that's developers testers the site reliability engineers the process enablers in general could be managers who manage those teams or the organizer organization as a whole who enable the whole process of chaos engineering right now what you can also see is that as a bonus the blacksmith develops uh a very chiseled body powerful biceps and great abs right so what is wh what is the kind of uh, bonus that we get out of this process if we were to follow it right and that's rhino skin so let me break it to you um chaos engineering is not a very easy process to adopt and sustain um any team who newly starts off this process has to go through a lot of lot of learning and literally name calling within the teams because they they have to go through a lot of pressure when they initially get into this process of chaos engineering so that's why i call it the rhino skin 
uh, which I'm sure myself and my team has developed over the years. We are quite thick skinned and we nothing actually bothers us much now. And obviously there is the knowledge base that we gain. You get to understand how your applications behave, how your platform performs. Does it fail completely in case there is a fault introduced into the system or is it able to uh, resiliently come back to its normal working position? So there is a uh, there is a vast amount of knowledge that you gain in the process as well. Now, obviously, there is tools, right? And what is the parallel for this in software? So in chaos engineering, all these tools that, you're, that are available in the market and that you would like to try out, it could be any of those tools. It could be Mangle, it could be Kremlin, Chaos Monkey, whatever your organization adopts. So that's basically what the tools are. And finally, the Katana SWOT. What is the Katana uh, SWOT for us, right? And what is it that we are aspiring to develop? And that's basically a very resilient product, right? And that's what we aspire to create through this process. Your baby, in the sense, in, in technical sense, every time we talk about um, a product, it's always, it's, it's my baby, it's your baby, right? Now, if people, people, if you're trying to determine the gender of the baby, let me remind you that it is it is your unconscious bias to gender diversity that is making you do it, and you're not supposed to do that, right? Okay, so jokes apart, that is chaos engineering for you in the most simplest terms. The process of forging software to make it tough and resilient by subjecting it to controlled, unfavorable environments, right? And that's why we draw a parallel between the forging process and between chaos engineering as it applies to software today. Now, okay, you, why do you have to listen to us? You know, why talkaholics, um, Ashwati and Abhinash, why should you listen to us anyway? Organizations and teams are at different levels of maturity when it comes to adopting chaos engineering as a step in the development process for software. Usually it is not an easy process, and if you are driving chaos engineering initiatives and walk into a room and is greeted by an applause, then you're, you're seriously doing something wrong, right? No one is going to greet you with an applause. Um, it's primarily a thankless job. Anyone familiar with this particular picture? All right, so if you've, you would have guessed it correct, it's Prahlad and Holika. Obviously, I am not the I am not referred to as Prahlad in VMware. I am definitely the Holika there. Um, and for the Indian mythology uninitiated, what that means is, I am the witch who threw your baby into the fire, or in short, the person who is involved in enabling the process of chaos engineering in VMware. And who is Avinash? So Avinash is seen as a hand who stokes the fire today. So in short, he is one of the key developers of Mangle and contributes heavily to the development of its features and faults. So we are people, as you can see, who evoke a lot of powerful negative feelings every time we walk into a room full of engineers and leaders who are trying out chaos engineering and for the very first time. So we must be doing something right because as I mentioned, it is not an easy process to adopt and sustain. So this is an opportunity for, for you to learn from our experience in dealing with various teams within VMware who's adopted this process. And today we can say for sure are successfully pro progressing and um, gaining a lot from this process. So I'll not get into a lot about the agenda. We will get to it as, as and when we progress. So let's get to the topic, why, why Mangle, right? So there is, there is a lot of tools in the market today for chaos engineering. Why should we go with Mangle? So literally, if you were a software blacksmith and you are keen in building resilience and strength for the applications you develop by subjecting it to conditions that are unfavorable, then what kind of workbench would you prefer? Would you prefer the first one, which is like a crowded mess you have just too many tools to choose from and you don't know what is lying out there. And whether you're building a sword or a rod, 
based on that you have to keep changing those tools or would you prefer a neat organized workbench with a specific set of tools that can be used irrespective of what you are building right now chaos engineering tools that are available in the market today are like the first workbench you need to have um, a different set of tools if you're building it for say on-prem versus SaaS, deploying on Kaitas versus Docker. But Mangrel aims to give you a clean, single platform of tools that can be reused irrespective of where you're de developing and hosting the application. It makes chaos engineering a lot more simple and easy to manage. And the icing on the cake is that it is open sourced, right? And it's very easy to extend as needed. So we will come to the, um, the framework within uh, within Mangle, which will enable you to extend it very easily. All right, so what you see in this slide is the value proposition of Mangle. It, uh, I will not get into details about what the list is. And uh, for all of those keen observers in the audience, I'm sure you would have noticed that the list for Gremlin is longer than the one for Mangle. Right, so let me give you one more data point to think about. So that's one. This is another, right? So now it makes it a lot more clearer since the difference is in millions. You're ready to kind of ignore the length of the list. It, it seems very insignificant now. And probably that is also why we have an early afternoon session today and Golden Andrews has a keynote in the evening. And with that comment, I have made sure that the conference committee will not extend an ex ex uh, invitation to me to present in future anymore. But again, um, now for the folks who are still not satisfied, I have only one thing to say, free me it night milega. Okay, anyway, jo jokes aside, um, what this also talks about is the commitment of these 10 engineers who have worked hard and put out this tool for the larger community to use. As in case of any successful open source project, it is always the larger developer community who contributes and makes it successful, right? Mangle has still a long way to go to garner that kind of support and I hope we get to that point very soon. So in a brief, Mangle is, is a tool which allows you to orchestrate chaos. It run, enables you to run a lot of chaos engineering experiments, a different variety of faults on whatever be the platform that you have and where you developed your developed and hosted your applications. So it's tried and tested against VMware product as well as all the common cloud platforms out there. It enables you to run uh, falls on Kaitas, Dockers, vCenter, or any remote machine that you might have. Uh, it has a very efficient custom fault plugin model, which is based out of P4J, which enables you to plug in new faults on the fly without really rebuilding your code from scratch. At a high level, uh, it's very simple. There is a data layer for uh, Mangle, which is the persistence layer, and that's built out of Cassandra. Usually we build these out as containers. So there is usually a Cassandra container running as well as a Mangle app contain container running in a typical deployment, a single node deployment of Mangle. But it also allows you to have multi multi-node clusters so that high availability of this tool is taken care of. So that is uh, the cluster management part of it is uh, taken care of by Hazelcast. And there is a module which completely is spring rest based and which handles all the vault services, right? So the beauty of the tool is that it has a very robust REST API framework layer, which allows you to invoke all the faults or any app, anything that you can do through the UI, just through a, a normal API call. So automating this process becomes a breeze, right? Now I'll not get into too much about the deployment models. If there are questions, we'll come back to this. At a high level, there are three different types of faults that we support. 
infrastructure level faults, application level faults, and database level faults, which are coming up with version three of uh, Mangle. Uh, so as, as you can see, we cover a broad a variety of faults in the infrastructure layer. It could be different types of resource faults. And as you can see, there are quite a few of them. And there are very there are certain things which are very specific to the infrastructure. Like for example, in Kubernetes, um, you have you can make resources available, you can make resources not ready, delete them. So those kind of faults are very specific to KATS uh, platforms. So we have support for those kind of faults as well. Then we also have application level faults. What this does is, again, this does not require you to have any kind of instrumentation at the application layer. We use an extension, extended Byteman agent to introduce these faults. So without really doing anything to your application, as long as it is a Java application, you will be able to run all these faults without any, any additional um, instrumentation needed for this, right? And that's the beauty of the Byteman agent. And we basically have enhanced the JBoss Byteman um, agent to make that happen, right? With that, let me hand it off to my uh, team member and colleague, Avinash. He will take you through the demo. And as part of the demo, we will be covering these uh, faults which are highlighted in green. Um, uh, one sample of network fault, a service unavailability for fault on Kubernetes and a Java exception fault. So thank you. Um, over to you, Abhinash. Um, yeah, so as uh, Shruti already uh, described about the part of uh, demo, what we are going to cover. So it's broadly categorized into two parts. One is where we will see the fault injection at the infrastructure uh, side and the other section where we will see the application level side and on the infra side we will uh, inject the fault on the remote machines and the kubernetes cluster and for application fault simulation we'll see the demo for um, docker endpoint so we'll start with the remote machine endpoint so the this is the home page of your mangle application so uh, once you log in to Mangle, this is the first page where you land up. And uh, currently for this demo, I have uh, used the admin credentials. And this is the default user which comes with uh, Mangle application. Uh, whereas you have the option of uh, having your own outs outsource configuration and uh, you know have your own uh, various users and uh, custom roles uh, for those users as well. So, uh, and apart from that, this homepage describes about uh, the key items which Mangle presents, Mangle supports, and then uh, from here you can navigate to various pages as well. Uh, so without getting uh, wasting much time, I'll first start the the primary point, which is uh, to inject the fault. The first primary item which you need to configure is your target endpoint, and here the um, thing which we are um, uh, considering is the naming as the endpoints and the support for the endpoints uh, we have is about uh, remote machine endpoints, the Kubernetes cluster as endpoint and the Docker uh, server the, as endpoint. And apart from that, we have a specific uh, endpoints for VMware vCenter and AWS as well. And there is a section for credentials. So uh, to support the endpoint, you uh, need the credential section to be configured for the respective endpoint. We'll see that now. Uh, so uh, I have already added an endpoint. I'll just show the required fields for that. So here we can see that the, there is a remote machine, which is uh, remote machine is a Linux box where uh, the SSH is uh, enabled for that machine and the port you need to specify while adding the uh, endpoint uh, in Mangle. So uh, what are the fields are mandatory here is the your machine host name or the IP address and as well as the port number. And that right now the default uh, operating system is Linux for us to support for, um, uh, for re uh, remote machine endpoint types. And then uh, to add that, you need to uh, know the SSH credentials. So from this option, you uh, you can directly navigate to the credential page or uh, you have a separate section as well. 
So to add the credential, you need to uh, give your uh, username as well as the authentication uh, in either a password in a form of password or the private key, whatever is supported. So that's how you add the endpoint for your uh, to start with. So once you uh, fill all the required fields into the for the uh, endpoint addition, you will do the test connection. Once the test connection is passed, uh, then you can submit for um, for the final step for submitting the endpoint. Now we are done with the first step, which is adding the endpoint. Now the second step is to uh, uh, use the fault repository, which Mangle provides, and target that endpoint for the fault injection. So, uh, so here you can see the um, like uh, we have the category categorize the fault execution part into uh, broadly into infrastructure fault and the application fault. So I'll just uh, highlight here at the uh, infrastructure level fault where you can see that the get, uh, the various types of fault which we are providing, uh, namely CPU memory, the disk I/O fault, and the kill process. Um, and I don't want to get into detail of that because uh, due to the limited time. Um, so, uh, like, uh, uh, they apart from this generic uh, faults, we uh, do support the networking, Docker, Kubernetes, vCenter, and AWS specific for infrastructure level faults. So, for this demo, I am going to present uh, one of the network specific fault. And for network fault, uh, uh, they are also categorized uh, into four types. Uh, we have packet delay, packet duplicates, packet loss, and packet uh, corruption. And uh, I think the uh, names are like self-explanatory to understand what type of fault uh, we support for that. So let's see uh, uh, one fault injection for packet delay. Uh, so this is the endpoint which I added into Mangle, and I'm just running a ping command to see uh, how it is reachable from my machine. And uh, here you can see that the natural latency right now, uh, which is coming from the ping command, is like around 200 millisecond. And uh, now we'll inject the fault. So first thing is you you will select the endpoint from your dropdown, and then uh, the NIC uh, configured for that. And then the latency of the millisecond which you want to inject. So here for this demo, I am injecting around 3000 millisecond latency uh, for any communication, for any packet transfer. And the this uh, section talks about the timeout in millisecond. So what is the meaning of uh, timeout is, uh, so what Mangle does is after uh, the particular timeout millisecond which you provided into the request body, the mangle uh, upon completion of that time mangle will uh, remediate the fault automatically so uh, here in this case i am providing the 50 uh, 1500 millisecond as 15 second for uh, uh, timeout for this particular fault um, apart from that we have two more options for schedule the fault and uh, uh, like scheduling you can do one time like any particular uh, time you can choose for for future um, and as well as we do, we can re, um, uh, schedule the fault for uh, recurring at a particular time frame. So, like for example, if you want to run the particular the fault in, uh, in daily at a specific time, that also you can achieve uh, by a scheduler. Um, all right. So uh, this fifteen thousand millisecond timeout will provide the fifteen second uh, timeout basically. And uh, uh, let's see how it works so i have injected the fault and will observe the behavior on the console so here we can see that the latency is injected and now the time is uh, added with the 3000 extra with the uh, original latency which was uh, coming into the ping command and see uh, now the 15 seconds are over so we can see that the it's uh, went back to the original uh, part and this is the page uh, where the once the fault is uh, execution is done, uh, the reports uh, will uh, generate for that. And you can see even the details of the fault injection, like what was the endpoint and the other parameters which you use for the fault injection. 
uh yes so that was about the first uh, um part of the demo is about the uh, remote machine so second category into the infrastructure fault uh, we are going to inject a fault onto the kubernetes cluster and uh, uh, before getting into that uh, uh, we'll see that what are, what type of uh, um, application where we can inject a fault so as uh, ashwati was mentioning about the various categories of fault in uh, mangle supports so uh, and we know that the uh, the applications are like uh, microservices based architecture are the key na nowadays and various uh, services all together combinedly creates one application and um, so uh, in this example i just uh, created one uh, sample sh uh, robot shopping application i deployed it in one in my cluster and what it this uh, sample app is does is uh, it provides you the option to buy the robots and various categories are there to purchase the robot so basically um, uh, uh, the this catalog categories uh, section is the catalog part where the catalog service is uh, responsible of uh, you know providing you the details about different type of robots and there you, then you can uh, select the robot for purchasing in add to your cart so that's the uh, quick information about the application where i am going to inject the fault so as a remote machine the um, the first point where we uh, from where we need to we can get into the fault injection process is the endpoint so here also we need to add the endpoint for this particular uh, um, uh application and to add that um like remote machine we need to add the credentials but the credentials will be different than that so here um uh, the credentials will will be your cube config file uh which which is uh you know communicating uh, the the mangle should be able to communicate to that cube config file so here we'll add the credential by submitting the cube config file to it and once the uh, credentials are added uh, for the cube uh, uh, for the Kubernetes endpoint. Will uh, we need to mention the namespace because uh, it's mainly uh, required to segregate your uh, namespace uh, in the cluster. You might have various uh, clusters available, so uh, to inject only on a particular namespace, you it's required and uh, uh, like in remote machine we did the test connection here upon test connection successful you should be able to submit the endpoint all right so once the endpoint is added we'll go back to go to the fault injection category so uh, uh, we have a category for kubernetes related faults and uh, uh, there are three type of faults uh, majorly we support for Kubernetes. Uh, as you can see, the names are delete resources, uh, resource not ready, and service unavailable fault. And uh, uh, by as the name uh, is ex ex explain explains itself that delete resource means uh, with the Kubernetes cluster you added. If you want to randomly delete uh, some resources, maybe for example, if you want to delete a couple of pods into your cluster or uh, uh, or if you want to simulate a fault where uh, the condition where the pods get into the crash loop back state so for that type such type of simulation we do resource not ready fault and the third category is about the service unavailable fault so uh, as i was talking about the uh, robot shop application and any microservice is uh, like combination of various uh, microservices so if you want to see the effect uh, failure of one service and how the dependent service reacts to that and is your application resilient enough for that so uh, we'll see that particular fault injection via this category and how you inject the fault is first uh, you select the endpoint and then the uh, criteria here is uh, there are two ways I, either you choose the name of the service or via the labels which are defined for the uh, service into into the description so for this particular application the uh, labels which are selected are like service name is catalog and uh, based on this label uh, 
the fault injection will happen and there is one more field uh, the random injection true so what that means is uh, uh, for example if you want to delete a pod with a particular label and uh, uh, there there can be multiple uh, pods with that same label so if you want to choose one of the pod for uh, deletion then you choose random in injection true and if you choose false then uh, uh, all the labels which will be uh, discovered by via, via mangle uh, uh, the fault will be injected on all the entities uh, which will be discovered all right so let's uh, execute the fault and uh, fault is injected now and if we click again the various categories for uh, the cat catalogs items into that into the application uh, it is not it is not uh, uh, you know available so uh, let's see the process request Yeah, the so fault injection is completed, and we can uh, see the details of where we have injected the fault. And uh, let's go to the application, and uh, here we can see that uh, the particular API response are failing, and it's giving the server er error that because the uh, the service is not available, and uh, those APIs are not working right now. Uh, and you can see that the the, uh, the images are not po uh, popping up and it is providing the blank so let's remediate the fault to see whether it's how it uh, reacts now so fault is remediated um, so by the way uh, we uh, there are a couple of more options apart from remediation so if once the fault is injection is completed and in future if you want to again uh, re trigger the same fault we do provide the option of either re-trigger the same fault or if you want to tweak some fields into the fault injection request body that also you can perform and uh, uh, now the since the fault is remediated will as we can see that now the catalog items are present and the apis are starting started passing and there is no failure now so that was about the kubernetes level fault um, so the third category about uh, your docker endpoint and here uh, in this for the docker endpoint we are going to talk uh, one application level fault so the application level fault as ashwati was explaining earlier uh, we do use bitemen uh, libraries for uh, doing the byte code manipulation at the runtime we don't need to do any um, se a separate configuration to do that at the runtime we will see so in this demo we'll see how this code will be manipulated using mangle so this is a sample application which is running into one of the docker container and uh, uh, the, in the swagger ui uh, the plugin controller shows the apis which are running and i will uh, target one particular api which is the get call for the plugin and uh, if we execute that we'll see that it is showing the 200 okay response with uh, with empty data right now there is no data into that and uh, uh, we'll go to this uh, docker machine where you can see uh, via docker ps command that this is the uh, docker container which is up for that uh, particular application and uh, we'll start uh, uh, see the logs of that particular container so that uh, we will see the fault injection uh, uh, process in via logs into that all right so again uh, the entry point is the endpoint and here uh, now we'll go for the docker endpoint um, so the docker endpoint is already added and we'll see the required fields <clears throat> so uh, unlike uh, remote machine and uh, kubernetes cluster uh, it's a little bit different so here the protocol which we use are directly using the uh, connection uh, from the docker apis and uh, if you are if the tls enable is false that is tls is not enabled then you don't require to upload any certificates or something otherwise uh, the there is a separate section for certificates where you need to upload else the default port where the docker uh, uh, on the docker server where the docker services are running you need to mention that port and the docker host ip or the host name and similarly once the test connection is successful you should be uh, good to go for the adding the docker endpoint uh, here we'll go into different category which is the application level fault 
and here also the similar to the infrastructural fault we have various common faults which goes and go and uh, inject the fault into your jvm and uh, the names are like cpu memory fault uh, file handle leaks and thread leaks and etc um and for the uh, apart from that we have java method latency spring service latency and spring service exception and similar java exception faults uh, all these things you can achieve via mangle and uh, for this demo purpose i am uh, going to present uh, the similar java exception so first thing is uh, you are selecting the docker endpoint and then injection home directory which is the optional part and the class class name so i am providing the plugin controller class name uh, which gives uh, the get api for the plugin and uh, the method name for the get api is the get plugins and here i am going to put the rule at the rule event is the add entry so there are various rule events are the available from whiteman uh, so add entry means when the code flow uh, uh, touches the uh, as soon as the it talks to the method at the entry itself the fault will be uh, injected and you will see the effect of that and if you want to uh, you know the method should execute uh, and it should do what it intend to and at the end of the uh, method execution if you want to inject the fault you can say at exit so similarly there are various um, uh, type of rules are defined for that and then you can define what type of exception uh, you want to simulate at that point of uh, execution and the custom message message also which you would like to uh, throw for a, a particular uh, fault injection now here uh, the uh, for that docker host the, the as two containers were running it will list all the containers which are up for that moment and from that you will select the container on which you want to inject the fault and uh, then the java home path you would need to define and uh, then the jvm process either you provide the process id or the process process descriptor uh, and the free port is the by default 9091 uh, you should you can use anything which is free uh, okay let's see how it uh, behaves so the fault injection is completed here we can see that uh, fault injection is done now we'll go to the swagger ui again and this is the log as of now there is no exception or error message and uh, we'll trigger the api again and here we'll call the get api api and execute it and there you go so here you can see that they are the api is failed and uh, it show, it's showing the 500 internal server error and even in the logs uh, uh, you can see the exception which you wanted is uh, invoked and uh, even the particular uh, exception message which you wanted to throw the ex application is uh, giving and the main intention is if uh, uh, if the dependent uh, classes or the consumers of that particular api uh, is the exception is not handled then um, uh, for from that perspective whether your application is resilient or not so that was a uh, uh, about the fault injection uh, an application fault now we'll remediate the fault and quickly verify uh, by just running the api again uh, that fault is injected or not so um, we'll go to the swagger and execute again and yeah we can see that the, now it's again behaving properly as it was earlier all right so that's about it um we have time for a couple of questions i guess is that correct vikram yeah okay so there there were a few yes in the discussion panel which have answered yeah so anybody has any questions in the audience please feel free to ask now uh, you can raise your hand and probably come on stage if you want to Okay, all right. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, Avinash Ashwati, for this wonderful session. Thank you for the opportunity and have fun building your own katana swords. Thank you for the opportunity and have a great Thank day. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.